Welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today we're just going to tape some corner beads. It's not going to be a crazy in-depth regular tutorial. I'm just going to tape some corner beads and you guys can kind of watch and learn. So first thing, um, I need to see what the height is for all of these corner beads. Because I have a bunch and it's maybe not a standard height. So I got like 106 and we can go a half inch down. 105 and a half. Let's check the other spots here. Yeah, 105 and a half would do there. And about here. A little short there, but there's baseboards going in here, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, so 105 and a half is the first measurement. What I'm going to do, check all these. Got them all lined up. I got five that I need to cut. 105 and a half. So I'm just gonna snip the paper right now, eyeballing it with 105 and a half, because I can't actually cut five beads. Can I? No. <laughs> but I can pretty easily cut two or three. So, there's three cut right there. One, two, three. Oh, we got three corner beads here. Did we need six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we did need six, so awesome, good. We planned that out right. Three beads cut right there. Now I'm going to make sure that I have that end that I cut at the bottom because when you cut it, it bends it a little bit and kind of distorts that bottom. So I'm putting it down there because it's going to get covered by the baseboard, so it'll be no big deal. Alright, so I got my taping mud mixed here. It's um, kind of thin. It's fallen off there. It's almost a little bit thinner than I like, but it's not as thin as I use it for taping corners or uh, using the super taper. So I like this to be a little bit runny, but not too bad. Uh, makes it faster to apply. It can stay on the wall longer, but it doesn't um, it doesn't droop too fast. And Anyways, let's get this stuff on. I'm talking too much. I thought this was just a demonstration. Not all the words. I can say words while I work. So, I got this all pre filled here because there was an old corner bead that got ripped off. I'm going to knock this stuff down. I am using a four inch knife. It's the one I like to apply corner beads with the most. We'll get into that in a bit. Or why not right now? I like to use the four inch knife because it's easier for wiping it out because it can apply a more direct pressure than say something like a six inch knife which spreads the pressure more broadly. So you can see I like to apply it this way, and I'm going for about a 1 8 thickness roughly. And I want it fairly uniform. And most importantly, make sure that it's a little wider than the flange of your bead. So go for like a couple inches wide so that you're not going to get any dry spots. And if you look up close, you can see that I don't have any voids. because we don't want any blisters in our corner beads. That sucks. Go and do your first coat over top of it, and you see this big bubble underneath, which means you need to cut it out and fill it, and blah, blah, blah. Just a waste of time. Okay. Giving it a 
little wiggle that just sort of helps set it in place. Squish it. See that mud kind of spilling out the side there a little bit. And I'm going to hide that real quick. So just looking at it, it looks okay. It almost looks like it needs to come out at the bottom. But I only have a four foot level here, so I'm not going to be able to really know what it's doing. No, it looks pretty good. I have a six foot. You have a six foot? I can see it's got a little bit of a wave right there. Although we are going on to the surface that was created by a stapled on bullnose bead. So if it's not a million percent uh, straight, that would be one of the reasons. You can pretty much guarantee that in one of these houses that people were just stapling those bullnose on as fast as they could. So it might waver a bit and the mud that we filled in that edge might waver a bit too. But just looking at that right now, it's looking better. That's looking good. I tweaked it a little bit at the bottom. That's looking good right there too. Okay, same thing. Squeezing that mud out. And I'm gonna start embedding that flange. Not the flange, the paper. Embedding the paper. I'm gonna check it real quick. Okay, so it's not right there. <laughs> That's somebody's phone. <laughs> Good. Okay. So whenever you're doing a reno, it takes a little more time, a little more mud to put these beads on. But I only have, you know, seven pieces of beads to put on. So we're not getting any of the fancy tools out for this. Um, I also find that sometimes the fancy tools don't work in renovations as well. And these are, I believe, the smaller corner beads that you find at the big box stores with about a uh, 5 eighths or 3 quarter inch flange. They're usually like the big guys with the one inch flange because they go on a lot straighter. Where do you get those? You have to go to a drywall supply to get those. But, but let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, just one like, inconsistency there, but it's actually in the wall. You can see it moving there. I see too much. That's the problem. If you have a trained eye, you can see it. But it's going to be okay, because like I said, it's following what the wall is already doing. Once it's all done, you know, take a step back, look at it, it'll be good. Let's get to this one. Can you guys even see this one, or am I just a shadow in this one? Okay, same thing. I'm going to need a bit more mud though. I don't like to overload my pan. I got a messed up wrist from breaking it too many times skateboarding, so I really never like to go around with much more than about half a pan full of mud. Just totally starts to mangle me.
push it up to the ceiling. And I squeeze that mud out and kind of embed it upwards so that I don't like drag the corner bead down and wind up with like a quarter inch or half inch gap up at the top there. Let's take a look at it and see what it's doing. Good there, good there. I'm just checking if you've watched any of my other corner bead videos to make sure there's daylight so that I can actually hide the flange of the bead. Yeah, we're good there, good there. These, um, the small beads that I was talking about don't have a lot of room to actually hide those flanges. The plus side is, I suppose, they build out a little bit less the downside is they're a little bit less user friendly. But I think the reason the big box stores stock these is because they're cheaper. And, you know, most people buying corner beads aren't going to know any better or that they're harder to work with. You know, and then they can sell them for more, more than you'll pay at a drywall supply anyways. All right. We got something going on here. Looks like I built out the wall a little bit too much with confill right here. That's not going to work out. So, because I can't hide the flange there. Yeah, must have been dark. End of the day, maybe. But that looks a lot better. I'm glad I caught that now. Paper mache for adults, you guys. Yeah, that's good. Now it's all under. Otherwise, you have to build it out in a hump to be able to hide those um, flanges if you don't install it square. And it looks good by eye. Yep, good stuff. All right, tell you what, let's do this one more and then the top one maybe, and then that, that ought to be enough for one video. And this other one's for a different video. Drywall is dusty work. No wonder people are always scared of drywallers coming to their house. <laughs> Don't worry, this carpet's gonna get replaced. Okay, now we can actually get the corner bead in closer there. Should have vacuumed up before I started this video. I'm always looking at it to try and make sure it's actually going on square. With time, you can start to see if it looks right before you even start pushing the mud out. 
uh, this stuff down here. You can see where we took that mud out there. That's going to fill in really nicely. And this wood trim is getting painted white, so it's not something we're too concerned with right now. Better. I'm gonna have to throw this pan of mud in the garbage <laughs> when I'm done. It's got so much stuff from down there in it. Okay, we're looking pretty good there, even though it doesn't look perfect. It's all under under this lip so it'll bury nicely. How about here? Close. Okay. That's good, I'm happy with that. And um, you know what? That's probably a lot of footage. So maybe we'll just call that at three corner beads. But um, that's uh, how I install corner beads most of the time. You know, most of my jobs are like 20 beads or less, so I don't find the need to get the tools out. And most of the time, you know, they're not as time consuming as some of these tricky ones where the beads have been ripped off, we're filling them in and then putting these back on. That does add a whole new challenge and quite a bit of extra time. But I'm happy with how these are turning out. And um, you know, that's how you install corner beads in a renovation. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Oh, hey, before we wrap this up, you know, there is another way that you can solve this sort of thing. So either you can scrape this all the way up and down the wall, the way I did at the very bottom there, or if you wanna go nuts, you know, and you have like the job to do it, you can also cut the drywall back about like eight inches or so, and then just scab a new piece on. And what that'll do is it'll take away the built up area that was there before. So that's another way to handle this situation. Um, but in this case, you know, we're just, we're filling in that spot and we're adding the new beads. It's probably the fastest way to get it done. And in most cases, as long as you have the space to build out the bead, it ends up looking really good anyways. So that's how we chose to do it here. So now we're actually at the point where we're wrapping up. Thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Till the next one.